<laughs> uh, Black Bear Diner is badass. This is the first time I've ever been one, and it wasn't completely packed. But but it is a it is a school day today, work day. But uh, but uh, I, this is like the a, a good a good breakfast place. They're, the that's something the West doesn't do well is breakfast diners. Just in general, that's the that's the hardest thing we found it to eat since we left Tennessee. All through the Dakotas and Wyoming and Montana and Idaho is, is a good good breakfast place. Idaho does a pretty good job with it, but man, uh, Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas. And I know you're all gonna say, but my town there's a okay. And just in general, they're hard to find. I mean, just this morning. We looked on Yelp, found one that was relatively close, and drove up there and closed. Yeah. I don't know if they wore themselves out yesterday at Labor Day, or if they were just like, we're closed on Tuesday. <laughs> there ought to be a law. We need another state government department to, like... The diner the, registration and... The DOB, the Department of Breakfast. Ah. But what if they want to have breakfast for supper? That's a different. That's that's, that's stupid. Is what that is. That's the I'm having summer. breakfast for dinner. You fucking retards them. Are you saying you're fucking having eggs and bacon for dinner? Don't say you're having. I'm, yeah, just think about it, like if you said I'm having dinner for breakfast. That sounds stupid. I'm having lunch for breakfast. I'm having fucking brunch for fucking midnight snack. Like this is what we talk about on these epic road trips. Yeah, the stupidity of people. The eighty-five percent IQ people. The real issues. The hard hitting issues like me needing another pack of sweetener in this strong ass coffee. It is, I gotta give it to him. This is. I put hair on your chest. Mm. No thanks. So it's day 22, right? Yesterday was day 21, wasn't it? Well, I'll agree at 22. I've mm. lost count. Was it yesterday, day 21? I, th I think so. So if yesterday was 21, that would lead me to believe that. Well, this is how I used to start warrants. So on or about day 22. <laughs> That's how you, you know. Circa. You know, yeah, on or about. Day you know, 22. Yeah, something, something. But uh, I'm getting tired. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm still good. Don't get me wrong. But like, like, uh, this is like, you know, like we got to sleep in today. And we've gotten to sleep in, I think, two or three days this trip or something like that and um, and I make the most of it because I actually woke up like at 6 30 but I laid in bed till 8 30 <laughs> I was like I'm, I'm I'm not getting up it was under protest yeah I will be awake but it will be under protest well after we uh polish off these coffees and an amazing breakfast I think we're gonna have to make our, our little pilgrimage to the west coast about an hour west of here yeah, I don't know if I feel like it I'm I, tired I get it but I feel like we're here what would Lewis and Clark do would they turn around I have my bracelet W-W-L-A-D-D -D. Like, that's a patch and a bracelet and I, if you saw a little ginger waitress I think I made her mad already because I don't think gingers like to be called ginger. Only a, only another ginger can call a ginger ginger. And I'm mostly ginger, so I'm like a I'm like the daywalker of the ginger, so they fear me. My 23andMe profile said 0% ginger. <laughs> it said 100% cracker. Yep. So I, along our journey, we have stopped in McMinnville, Oregon, and uh, we have classes coming up here. Um, Gales Creek near here, Gales Creek, uh, but uh, but uh, TJ's Gun Sales is owned and operated by an alumnus and uh, and some other alumni alumni work here and stuff like that. So let's go into TJ's and kind of take a look around and see what they've got going on. But I can go ahead and tell you that if you live in the the greater McMinnville, Oregon area, this is your gun shop. So they got all kinds of standard stuff. In an office. And lots of magpole slingage, guns and stuff. 
uh, all kinds of AR-15 accessories at your pro center, stuff that you want to have, tons of ammo by the case, lights, guns, everywhere. And they're all people in here talking their gunshot stuff. Oh, this guy recognized me earlier. So, and, uh, so, so now you're the dude on YouTube. Now I'm the dude on YouTube. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they're just beautiful. And they shoot fantastic. And they're doing really well. So. And they've got a gunsmith on, on duty here. And all kinds of cool stuff. Just uh, holsters. And all kinds of, all kinds of that stuff. It's Tuesday, September 4th, the day after Labor Day. Well, I made it. <laughs> We're only, uh, only halfway through our trip. I forgot to check the, uh, the, the trip odometer, but uh, we're about 5,000 miles into our road trip. And here I am in Lincoln City, Oregon, on the coast, enjoying the view. It's chilly, it's windy, uh, but it's worth it. It's kind of been a, a lifelong dream of mine. Uh, I can't ever remember a time in my life not wanting to own a motorcycle. And I, ever since I was very young, uh, I can't remember not having the urge or the desire to ride my motorcycle across the country and go west all the way to the Pacific Coast. And here I am. Sometimes life's pretty grand. And it's these little moments that I enjoy. It's beautiful here. There's still a little bit of freedom here in Oregon because we got some awesome people here trying to keep it that way. Back when I was in college, I had a good friend who was attending uh, the Air Force Academy, Colorado Springs. And uh, I, was, I was getting ready to graduate college. And, and in my brain, I thought, oh, wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, I wanted a crotch rocket at the time. If When I graduated college, I, I bought a crotch rocket, jumped on it, and rode west at the time from, from Detroit, Michigan, uh, to Colorado Springs on that motorcycle to see him when he graduated. And uh, of course, that didn't happen. I, I bought a car. And uh, looking back, that was a much better option in terms of what I was ready for and, and the idea now of riding cross country on such a, an uncomfortable bike that you can't hardly bring any gear with would be a... Yeah, I'm glad I didn't do that. But the other thing that I always, we had always talked about was going up to Alaska working on a crab boat for a few months, getting major bank, and then buying a couple of Harleys and riding from Alaska down through Canada and uh, all the way, the 101, all the way through the, the Pacific coast down into California and all the way to Mexico. Maybe, maybe someday I'll do that. But uh, as it stands now, is as beautiful as California is, that's all they've got. They're so short on freedom and personal liberty that I'm surprised to, to see myself even now. I, I, I have no desire to go there. I'm, I'm content to sit here where it's still a little bit cool, too cold to get in the water. Maybe as a younger guy, I would have done it, but I'm content to just sit here and enjoy the view, read, uh, read some of my book from Professor Paul, Morning Mindset. I was reading uh, chapter three today. He was talking about goals. And he talked about 
his second year in the Marine Corps, how he had written down goals. Um, after having a conversation with a friend, he had written them down physically on a piece of paper in a notebook. And of course that notebook got tucked away. And years later, after he had already exited the Marine Corps, he found that notebook probably forgot about most of the particulars of what he had written down but what he realized is he had accomplished all those goals that he had written down and what Professor Paul is, is talking about is when you write it down physically you put it into your subconscious and you have your subconscious you plant that seed there and it steers you and it uh, it was refreshing to read that but there are people that still think that way and and put that information out. If, if you haven't read the book, Paul Merkel from uh, Student of the Gun, it's an easy read, it's simple, and I guarantee you probably know a lot of what's already in here, but if you're like me, every once in a while we, we have to remind ourselves. But I enjoyed reading the, that chapter because I, I recall the same thing when I was in my first A school here on the West Coast, one of the things that we had to do was write down, write a goal card down and tape that goal card onto our locker, which was our closet in our room. So it was always in a place that you would see it every day, because every day you'd have to go there, open up, put your uniform on. And I don't remember everything I wrote down, but one of the things that I wrote down, and again, I had found a year or two later was to run my first triathlon and it was funny because at the time it seemed like such a huge mountain and looking back when I found that card again I had already run my first triathlon of course I was a younger man had more of my body parts and organs but it was interesting when I, I looked back understanding what it was like to plant that seed into your subconscious and how that seed germinated and it put me in a position to where I met people that I could team up with and train with and it just it seemed like one thing led to another and I had a you know something on my bucket list checked off Whew, day 23 uh, we are leaving the uh, McMinnville, Oregon area, going down to Lakeview, which is in the very southern tip of Oregon. That is where uh, the small town near Thunder Ranch is. Going to go down there and take the instructor class and looking forward to it. And um, it begins tomorrow. We got about uh, seven, about, but call it an eight hour drive, plus uh, a Starbucks stop. Uh, we We've been out in the middle of nowhere for so long, and Nate is a, as you guys probably know, is a, a, a coffee snob. Uh, <laughs> he's a consumer of fine coffees, and uh, so we're. Uh, see, he had, had some Black Rifle coffee in Utah, and <laughs> he's had very few good cups of coffee since we left. So before we drive into the Oregon Outback, uh, he's having some coffee. And uh, the Oregon Outback is the only place I've ever been in my truck with a full tank of gas and four five-gallon cans that were full and thought I might run out of gas before I got to another gas station. So I'm really worried about our route this morning as we go about uh, gas stops along the way and stuff. So I'm going to top off every chance I get. We've only uh, run out of gas one time on this trip. And luckily, we had the you know fuel cans with us, but uh, do our best to stay, stay ahead of it today but uh, the weather looks nice and we've been blessed with weather on the whole trip and it is such a huge part of it not having to fight rain and stuff like that and uh, so, so 20 day 23 and we were rained on for a couple hours the whole so and it was on the way up you know so we really we haven't had rain in weeks so I mean if you ride bikes you know like that is a, that is a blessing and the temperatures have been cool but not cold so we can wear all of our leathers you know most of the day and all that stuff without getting hot so it's just been uh, it's just been uh, just a, a blessing weather wise on the trip it's, it's been fantastic and all the people we were just 
at McMinnville at TJ's gun sales and, and uh, stayed with uh, uh, those folks in their home and their gracious hosts. And, and uh, you know, you're living out of a hotel, staying in somebody's house is nice. Uh, you know, it's a nice change of pace. We typically stay in hotels to stay out of people's way, you know. Like, you know, people's got kids and school on the schedule and, you know, us showing up. And mo- most people are more than hospitable, but we show up and we're usually a pain in the ass. And uh, But uh, but uh, we try to stay out of their way. But, so, you know, get a chance to do laundry and all that stuff, all that tactical stuff uh, uh, on the road. But uh, just, just such good people. We've met along this way or met again, you know, re- re- rekindled a relationship with or whatever the case may be. And, uh, it's just been, uh, just been, it's just been wonderful. Just, uh, just a, 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 an amazing experience. I'm expecting no less today. So, here comes Nate, and uh, we will uh, get on the road momentarily. Somebody says, "Hey, I'm a marine biologist in the house." And she looks at him, and. Uh, and he, so he goes over to the whale. Now, earlier in the show, Kramer had had golf balls, and he was just whacking them into the ocean. And so George, so the story connects together with George. And he said, I reach into the blowhole of the mighty beast. And he pulled out a tide list. <laughs> <laughs> moments like this yes I could have I could have watched Seinfeld every episode <laughs> you could have watched I, it at all I, I yeah I could have watched it at all but if I did I wouldn't get it I wouldn't get Seinfeld run through the Jaeger filter the way I have been this entire trip <laughs> we like gotta it, get you Seinfeld in it yeah every let's see if I can turn this it doesn't turn that way yeah. Oh, there we go. So, we're here, I don't know, maybe 30 miles north of Lakeview, Oregon. And this is the lake. That's a shitty name for a town. Yeah. Terrible. I was pretty pretty excited about... Uh, we lost our path. How do we get back? Oh, yeah. We should have left, uh, dropped breadcrumbs. Now we're, now we're done. It's, as the crow flies... But 100 yards that way. The path. I just I figured we're outdoors. We're pretending to be, be marine biologists. I think a per, marine biologist would say, as the crow flies, this, right? This, no, th- there are no crows in the marine biology. As the sperm whale swims. As the why you gotta say sperm? Because it's why do you gotta gay it up? Well, because somebody did. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who made up that name, but. I don't know how many people he had to get it past for that to be the official name. <laughs> for that to be the final. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're uh, not far from Thunder Ranch with Clinton Heidi Smith. Probably not far from a goddamn rattlesnake bite either. Well, and that. Out here fucking around on this metamorphic rock. Mm-hmm. But nobody likes you, Nate, because you can't identify rocks and minerals. <laughs> I put that, uh, after I learned that in second grade, I data dumped it. <laughs> it's like, what can I say to girls to make them want to make out with me? Like, hey, you're as soft as towel. Well, I'd like to buy you the hardest rock in the world, a diamond. <laughs> See, talc is the softest. Diamond's the hardest. What he said. Okay, so. Bitches don't know about cleavage, I'll tell you that. They don't know about cleavage? Cleavage. You mean like boobs and the line between them? No, when you break a rock, what you see is called cleavage. It's from the cleave. (laughs) You're Uh, off the path. Come on. Oh, okay. Keep it together. I can't film. fucking breathe up here. Where are we at? 100 feet above sea level? I don't know, but it's hot. I was just freezing on the Pacific coast of Lincoln City, Oregon yesterday. Go a few miles inland. Get lost on a trail to this really weird looking lake. Anyway, like I was saying, 
headed to Thunder Ranch. Pretty excited to get there, but we had to at least stop and check this place out. Sometimes you gotta stop and smell the stinky alkali-based lake.